Roger Geffen's with us from Cycle UK, a very high-powered man who's come to the Isle of Man to talk with the PAG group on Monday night about cycling, obviously. And I know you haven't been here long on the island, mm -hmm. but you've had a little chance to see things like oh, Peel Road and those sort of mm -hmm. ideas. So should we start with the ideal, this sort of thing you'd like to see and how the Isle of Man is doing? I mean, cycling has become huge. And in London, I know particularly in, in UK, cycle lanes have now come back into vogue and... and, mm -hmm. and Coming quite an issue. Uh, some people say an issue, some would not. What's your take on it? Are, are people doing enough? Uh, well, here in the Isle of Man, mm, okay. um, I think. Well, even even the rest of the UK has an awful long way to go to really maximise the benefits of cycling for our health, for our environment, for reducing congestion, for making our roads safe for children as uh, older people, for people of all ages to get around. Uh, the Isle of Man, likewise, has a long way to go. Um, it, and this is such a fantastic island. Uh, you know, it could be such a wonderful benefit to the Isle of Man economy to uh, be opening up as a, as a as a recreational destination for cycling, but also as a means of enabling people to enjoy those health benefits and reduce uh, congestion on, on on in the on the uh, in the streets of, uh, of the Isle of Man's towns. So. Um, the, the island really needs to start thinking in terms of planning networks, not just in, not just individual isolated bits of cycle facility in in, where, in places where there's because a bit it's of spare. not joined up. You mean basically. exactly? It needs yes. to join up rather than having little disconnected bits of cycle facility in places where there's a bit of spare uh, space and a bit of spare cash that doesn't actually enable people to get from A to B wherever A or B might be for any local yeah. journey. Well, That's what's needed. As I was saying, the UK. I mean, they're, they're literally taking major roads and mm -hmm. putting in cycle lanes, which is strangling a lot of other things. So you, you get people who are not happy. With with what's going on but you know that that's the way it's going it's, it's definitely towards that sort of angle now is it to have dedicated lanes everywhere well if possible. that's that it's, it's <laughs> going to it's going to take a long time to get to the situation yeah. where we have dedicated lanes everywhere but uh, that's that's got to be the long-term ambition um in terms of uh, um what do we need to, what do we need to do about the the objections well first thing is that uh, cycle facilities are in fact very efficient ways of using road space. A typical lane on a typical road can either take 2,000 cars per hour or 14,000 14, bicycles. So it's a very efficient way of enabling people, a lot more people, to get from A to B, even particularly yeah. in congested circumstances. And of course it's better for air quality, for, for, for safer streets, and it enables everybody to get around, not just adults who, who, are, who are able to drive. There's been a, an incentive in the UK for tax uh, incentive. Now, the Isle of Man's going down that road, obviously you must be mm pleased with that sort of way of travel that people are thinking about how to get people on a bike almost. Absolutely. We certainly need to see uh, incentives. Certainly in the UK, the government has been making huge incentives available for people to switch to electric cars, but absolutely nothing so far for electric uh, electric bicycles. Same electric here, of course. They didn't, do, they didn't yeah. go down that. It's a shame because I think a lot of people would have liked that. It's halfway house almost, isn't it, really, electric well, bikes? absolutely. It's a very cost-effective way of enabling people to continue to cycle longer and uh, later in life, to, to cycle for slightly longer journeys than they'd otherwise be willing and to hills. take on them. And we, we have and a few hills in the Isle of Man. And I was going to say, to deal with hills. So this, this island is absolutely made for, for, for electric bicycles, and they are extremely effective. Way in, in the Netherlands, 16% of cycle sales are now e-bikes. They are really mm. catching on, and they are helping people to stay uh, healthy later in life as well as uh, overcoming uh, disabilities that would otherwise prevent people from cycling at all. And as I was saying, it's sort of power assist, isn't it, most of them? So you're still bicycling, you're still turning the crank, but you come to a bit where you need a bit of help in drop the motor to help out. That's right. That's an important dis uh, dif uh, difference between an electric bicycle and an and, and electrified motorbike, right. is that it r does require you to do some cycling. Mm. Um, so you're still getting those exercise benefits, but you've got that backup, that insurance, that it'll still help help you to get home if you conk out or if you're, uh, uh, if you're, if you're beginning to feel frail. <laughs> it, it just gives you that assurance that you are going to get home. Okay. So safety must be a big issue as well, mm -hmm. because we have had things here about giving two meters uh, it's not law but they, a lot of people are trying to push for that again mm -hmm. how big is that for you safety uh, yes it's uh, well it's hugely important it is the main thing that deters people from, you know, from from cycling is the perception and indeed the reality that it isn't as safe as it should be and it isn't as safe as it is in countries like the netherlands and germany and denmark where where there are a lot more protected lanes and where you haven't got protected lanes for cyclists then you need lower speed limits you need one or the other you either need well actually there's a third category which is the entirely motor traffic free route which of course is 
absolute gem of a, of a good cycle network, but it still needs to be connected up to the rest of a, of a comprehensive network. As, a, as I said earlier, the network needs to enable people to get from any A to any B, uh, whether it's from homes to shops to workplaces and so on. And those are buildings that are usually on the road network. So simply having those motor traffic free routes is not enough. It's a wonderful thing to have, but you've also got to have the protected routes along the busy main roads or at the other end of the spectrum to have roads that are lightly trafficked, sufficiently lightly trafficked with sufficiently low speeds, preferably 20 mph speed limits on the, on the more minor streets, because that is what uh, that combination is what allows children and older people to cycle, not just um, relatively fit, mostly male, uh, young to middle aged uh, pe uh, people. It's got to be, uh, you've got to make provision for people of any age and any ability to get around by bicycle. Okay, well, we're well known for our cyclists on the other man. Uh, Pag night on Monday, usual place, of course, the Manx Legion Hall. I is there a debate on this, or are you just going to give a presentation and then take questions? I mean, how's it going to work? I think the format is that I just I, I will I will I will I'm open give up the thing. discussion yeah. and then and then see where the discussion goes from there. So I'm looking forward to hearing what uh, what pe uh, what uh, what people's experiences are of cycling on the Isle of Man um, and offering thoughts and bouncing ideas around as to what could be done to make it a much more normal way of getting from A to B. And I should point out before you left before we leave this that you you and your party turned up on your bikes here today, so you definitely believe in it, right? It's, it, it, it is my standard way of getting around. Um, it's uh, it's the one way of getting around that is consistently enjoyable. Uh, despite all the frustrations you sometimes get from irresponsible drivers, it's still a really enjoyable way of getting from A to B very efficiently and, uh, and you get to see great scenery when you use it to get out into the countryside.